Let's catch up with a new team of nanotech-enhanced mercenaries tasked with capturing dangerous mutants for imprisonment and experimentation at Grey Malkin Prison. Is this the best comic to come out of the From the Ashes era? Let's find out in our review of Sentinels number one from Marvel Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Sentinels number one. Whenever you're starting with a new title, with a new cast of characters, a creator has absolutely one job that supersedes all others. A creator must prove beyond a shadow of a doubt why that comic needs to exist. The comic in question must have an engaging character, a personal or professional crisis, or an unbelievable twist that signals to the reader that this comic is worth your time and money. Does writer Alex Pagnadel prove that Sentinels number one deserves to exist? Well, let's find out. Sentinels number one begins with the titular Sentinels dropping into the middle of a Russian village to acquire their latest target. The team is composed of individuals with let's call it checkered pasts and they're outfitted with adaptive nanotech suits that give them enhanced protection, unique firepower, and all kinds of abilities. The team is directed from Grey Malka Prison by the familiar mutant character known as Lawrence Trask. Alex Pacnadel begins the issue with marauders-ish type tones as we are thrown into the middle of a mission with a group of not-so-heroic characters, complete with colorful code names straight out of something like a G.I. Joe comic from the 1980s. And they all know that they're there for a job to do, but they're not particularly happy about it. From the actions and reactions of the team members, the nanotech and their professionalism under pressure are still kind of a work in progress. Pretty quickly, we learn the team's target is longtime X-Men villain Omega Red. The villain wastes no time emerging from the shadows and attacking as soon as he sees the Sentinels. The fight gives everyone a chance to show off what their unique nanotech suits can do. So we see Lockstep, the leader of the team, can pair with other machines to control them remotely. Sawtooth can absorb metal to add to her bulk and become sort of a giant mech. And Voivod becomes a living bomb. Pacnadel makes the team's capabilities eclectic enough to be diverse and interesting but the logistics behind their abilities are somewhat vague. How does Voivod blow himself up and still survive because his face is totally exposed? Is that ability really practical? How does Sawtooth turn into a large, complex-looking robot mech by absorbing just the blade from a snowplow? Yeah, sure, it's just a comic, and we'll say that in quotes, but you at least have to make it somewhat believable. Here, it just sort of comes off as cool, but impractical, or in some cases, just completely unrealistic or believable. Voivod delivers the blow that knocks out Omega Red for capture. During the fight, Shellback begins to malfunction as the nanotech graphs begin to take over his body from inside out. It looks pretty horrific. Trask sends word to eliminate Shellback on the spot as a failed prototype, and Voivod carries out the order with extreme prejudice, much to Lockstep's dismay. To Pacnadel's credit, sending a team into the field with buggy tech is a great way to create instant tension. We also learn that the team members have to take mood stabilizers as part of the nanotech bonding process, which makes for even more tension when not everybody adapts to their technological and chemical treatments with equal proficiency. In other words, the team is pretty messed up. Later, Lawrence Trask is lectured by Warden Ellis for sending the team into the field and terminating one of its members without her authorization. Trask is unconcerned with Warren Ellis' authority, so she storms off to report her concerns to the board. Meanwhile, the team settles in back at Grey Malkin to receive the next injections of mood stabilizers. The lockstep's mood darkens when he learns Trask has already assigned a new team member, codenamed Drumfire, without briefing him first. The preceding collection of scenes from Trask's argument with Warden Ellis to the blow-up with lockstep during the injection ceremony, if you want to call it that, helps to inform the reader that not everything is running like a well-oiled machine back at Grey Malkin. There are competing interests, egos, and agendas at every level. Some agendas are very clear, others are not. Pacnadel smartly stacks the drama on top of more drama at every opportunity, so you get plenty of tension in this comic. The issue concludes with Lawrence Trask proving his worth to the board, partly through the use of his mutant powers, Drumfire proving her worth by shooting Omega Red with her Godzilla breath during a prison break at Grey Malkin, and Onslaught out of nowhere just showing up. And that's the issue, so let's talk about the positives and negatives, starting with what's great about Sentinels number one. Well, to be fair, it's certainly different than any other comic coming out of the From the Ashes era. 
Alex Pagnadel pulled the world and team together almost from scratch. So kudos on the effort and the inventiveness to try and come up with this core concept, these individuals that come together as a team, and to create all the layers and threads of plot that are going on at the same time. So let's switch over to what's not great about The Sentinels number one. Looking back on the opening statement, Alex Pagnadel's job above all else is to justify this comic's existence. Unfortunately, I don't think he succeeded. The characters, for now, are blank slates that aren't particularly compelling. They have unique voices, but there's nothing grabbing you by any one of them. The team's mission isn't particularly unique or interesting because there isn't a goal or obvious stakes. They're just doing things, but we don't know why they're doing any of it or where they're going with it. The drama, while copious, essentially amounts to people you don't care about being mean to each other, and that's just not enough to hang your hat on. Taking that a step further, there's no setup to help readers understand what's motivating this team and their bosses. Why is Gray Malkin after top-level mutants for experimentation? Why did this group of people sign up for a dangerous job knowing they'd be treated as guinea pigs? Why should a reader care about anything that's happening in this comic? Look, here's a good rule of thumb to live by. If, after reading a comic, you can't come up with a compelling reason to keep buying the title, the creators missed the mark. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second. Justin Mason's art style is decent. That's about as good as I can put it. But short of typical Marvel house style quality. Mason's pencils and inks are sketchy. Details get lost in the wide shot panels. And Mason's hatching technique is rough. The art in this issue is perfectly in line with, I say, a B tier or C tier indie publisher, but subpar for a $4.99 Marvel comic. Final thoughts, what do we think about Sentinels number one from Marvel Comics? It's one of the more unique comics to come out of the From the Ashes era of X titles, and that's for sure, but it just doesn't need to exist. The characters aren't compelling, the motivations and stakes behind the team's missions aren't clear, and the art is, to be frank, below average for a Marvel comic. Drama, for its own sake, just isn't good enough. Therefore, Sentinels number one earns a five out of 10. From the Ashes is already off to a bumpy start, so packing the shelves with more titles that serve no purpose isn't the right way to go. But what do you think? Am I being too hard on Sentinels? Leave a thumbs up if you think I am, and drop a comment below with which From the Ashes title you think is the best, that's number one, and the worst, number two, so far. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out the varying covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.